Hey everybody, uh, Taco and Wow we're here. Taco's just uh, repairing some damage from a creeper that came up and uh, sabotaged our demonstration here. <laughs> We, we don't want to turn the creepers off because we want to keep it pretty real. <laughs> but uh, it, they, they do create some moments of panic and fun. <laughs> I enjoy the creepers. Taco doesn't like the creepers. <laughs> now when I'm trying to spotlight some uh, equipment, I got my like, <laughs> Well, we are spotlighting today. And I see a transmitter and receiver here. Taco, what are we, what are we spotlighting today? Uh, we're simply going to cover the transmitters wireless transmitter and receiver which is part of uh, the Tekkit mod pack we're using uh, Tekkit 312 <clears throat> so a standalone mod which I believe is called wireless uh, redstone uh, we're simply covering this part of it I believe there's a couple other features like the jammers and whatnot but we right we'll cover those maybe in another video uh, but for today Transmitters and receivers. That's it. Today, transmitter and receiver. So let's start. Ooh, you know what? Before <laughs> before, uh, before I throw this switch, we got to make sure we're on the right channel. <laughs> I had to set the channel uh, 30, so that would have been a uh, that would have been some fun. All right. So one of the first things that you want to do, uh, set up a, tra a transmitter. Right, and then you create a channel for your transmitter. So, whatever signal you send from this transmitter, you'll want to set the same channel on your receiver. Now, we have three channels set up today. One, just to show you what uh, what we can do here, we've got some redstone from a receiver to a lamp. We've got a red wire from a receiver to, to a piston and then a receiver straight up to a piston. And you'll see, uh, <laughs> there's a creeper just heads up behind you there. You'll, you'll see, uh, if we flip this switch, uh, you'll see that the signal gets sent to the receivers and everything, uh, everything is actionable there. Again, you can have, you can have as many receivers as you need. Uh, you can have multiple devices. They don't have to be next to each other anywhere in the world. Right. As long as they're all on the same frequency. And uh, that's actually a point that, that we wanted to make is that there is no real limit to the distance that these devices will work. We've we've actually run them out, oh gosh, probably 20, 30 chunks away, and, and they still work as long as that chunk is active, as long as someone's in that area. Right? Um, yes, sir. I believe it has to be an active chunk, which right. uh, if you use a dimensional anchor or world anchor or any of those devices that keep chunks active, uh, these, of course, will still work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that makes it fun. It opens up a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of possibilities for how you want to implement these. Uh, this uh, Okay, so this is channel 10 right here that we just demonstrated. Channel 20, we've got hooked up to an alarm and a lamp. And this is something that I've hooked up in a house of mine. So I've got a pressure plate hooked up here. You can see we activate the, sorry, <laughs> you can see we activate activate the transmitter, and the receiver picks up the signal. Okay, and then you can also, you know, I mean, you can go from there. You can put in um, timers and repeaters and all kinds of neat things in between there. So use your imagination and have fun with it. Um, Channel three we'll save here for for us <laughs> for for the end of the video. What I wanted to show you was how to set the channel on the transmitter and the receiver. They're both the same. This is the menu that you've got. If you right click on the transmitter, you'll come up. First of all, this is what you're going to see is the menu to select your frequency. So we've selected frequency ten. You could select anything up to five thousand. Uh, that's the the cap on that but our first channel is channel 10 you can once you once you s select a frequency for the channel you just you can click advanced if you'd like and you can name that channel so here it says frequency name you can see that we don't have anything set for channel 10 so we just uh, put our cursor in the frequency name and we'll call it uh, let's just call this open test okay and we set the name <clears throat> And and that's uh, th then we can identify the the channel. 
it, it comes in handy. It's not so bad if you just have one or two channels. It's easy to, re to remember what is what, but <laughs> there's some some worlds that I I don't know what we've probably created. Oh, I don't know, twenty different channels in some places. And uh, well, it, uh, your your limits are uh, five thousand either way, so that's right thousand possible frequencies. A name might be handy after a while. <laughs> it, it, that does come in handy. So you can name your channel. You can also uh, label your channel with a color. If you put a, a luminary in here, uh, I don't, you know, I don't have one. But if you put like blue lapis in there, your your channel will be blue. Um, it doesn't change the frequency of the channel. You're, it's just a, another way to name it or label it. And so that is the menu. And, and again, you'll see, I'll come over here to the receiver. You set the channel the same way. So um, just plus and minus, and you select your frequency. Again, advanced. Uh, all these menus are the same. Oh, did you throw me some luminary? Yeah. Yeah, cool. through your blue loom. Yeah, cool. So you can see we've got the blue loom in the spectrum here. And. Uh, we hit phase shift and it, it is now a blue channel. So, cool. All right, that's how you set the frequency on the transmitter and receivers. Uh, what else did we want to show them, Taco? The only thing I was going to add is when you uh, color code the <clears throat> spectrum, uh, it does also color code the wireless remotes that you carry around. So if you had three different wirelesses for different channels, it's nice and easy to spot the different channels just by the color of the green remote, the red remote, the blue remote, whatever. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And um, actually, if you'll look, let me click on my uh, handheld. Uh, I'm currently on channel 10, and you can see that it's blue. If I switch it to, let's say, alarm, uh, you can see that it's not blue anymore. It's white. All right, so I guess, you know, kind of a, a good safety tip would be like if you have something like the blasting charge make it a nice bright red or yellow or something <laughs> so it stands out on your screen um maybe i don't know it's just an idea hey, the other thing uh to go to guys that I, I think earlier i mentioned that you could throw like lapis in there you actually have to throw a lumen in there you know i mean you could make blue lumen out of lapis but i just wanted to uh, clarify that again real quickly and um all right I do have a special channel here, Dakota guy, channel 30, that we could end this video with. Are you ready? Yeah. Here, let me uh, let me go highlight over here. Uh, the great thing we like to do with the remotes, wireless, in case WoW is taking cover uh, in a PvP scenario, set up your trap. Uh, you can not necessarily even have to have it in the open uh, just wait for your uh, your prey to uh, come along you can of course hold shift to hide your name a little bit yeah I'm sneaking <laughs> <laughs> and then when your prey comes over like hey who put this dynamite here he's looking for switch plates and whatnot but you don't even need one ah, run away. <laughs> Get a bigger explosion with like a nuke or something. <laughs> and it'll, it'll work yeah, for a nuke. We, we tested it on the nuke. It works. So, uh, all right. Well, I think that's we, the end. We ended this video with a bang. See you later, guys. All right. <laughs>